Sue here and I am making a video for Mikey O and he had some questions about how we choose a pipe whether we choose it for function or style and so um, this was going to take and be a long video so what I'm doing is I'm going to make it in parts and then I'm going to cut it all apart so it's smaller this is a canopy uh, and it is you know, got some Vulcan blend in it Bill Bailey's Vulcan blend uh, from 09 and uh, I just opened the bag and so of course I am going to smoke it until I'm tired of it. That's kind of how I, I smoke. I'll smoke a couple blends and then when I get tired of it I'll smoke a new blend. These are, uh, and, and I'm going to show you like two or three pipes that all look very similar. You'll see that they all have this same shape and function. This is a GBD. Got unique stem on them. And so I walked over to look at them. One smooth. One sandblasted, they're both similar shape. This one's a little bit bigger, has a bigger bowl, actually has a bigger drill bowl out than this one. This one's more comfortable in my hand because it's a little bit smaller, and because it has a smaller bowl, I smoke a lot of short bowls, you guys know. So this one, uh, I tend to pick up more than I do this one. They smoke good. All of my pipes have a tendency to smoke good because if they don't smoke good, I pass it on to somebody else and let them try it and see if it smokes well for them because some pipes... So that's why these bought, these were bought for the function, for a little bit of the looks because of the way this bit is, but more importantly, it was for the shape of the bowl and for the functionality of me being able to smoke uh, a bowl. Some pipes were gifted to me and they were never intended to be smoked. A good example is this really neat little cob that Angela created and there's a tamper that matches it and although it probably could be smoked I won't smoke it this was a pipe that was made for me and gifted to me as a gift and uh, I like it too much to uh, put any damage to it and even though we don't really damage our pipes when we smoke them we keep them in good shape for the most part some pipes just you cannot smoke a good example is one of these little pipes that Miss Skeeter sent me. She signed her name on it. And there's just no way that I would smoke uh, a little pipe that's been gifted to me. And it's been gifted to me as a, as a friendship thing. So you, these two, you know, I probably won't smoke. And there's a lot of pipes that I won't smoke. And I'm going to show you more of them also. There's a young piper named Eric, new maker. He hadn't really come into his style yet. So he was um, making a lot of pipes in a lot of different styles out of a lot of different woods and trying a different methods. And so I was lucky enough to be young enough back then and, and to be around that I got to get Alice. And Alice is a really special pipe. I don't think you can tell that she's red striped. It's a red toned wood and then that beautiful top and then as you can see each of these is a groove and if you can't see it that's they're grooved and then they're painted inside. It's a very nice pipe and her name is Alice as from uh, All the Young Girls Love Alice. Uh, right about then Elton John came out with that song and as soon as I heard that song I knew that this was her name because when I take her out in public and smoke her, everybody wants to smoke Alice. Everybody just loves Alice. And so she gets smoked, but this is uh, not very often that she gets smoked. It's usually special occasions. It's when I know I'm going out in public and I want her to be seen. So uh, she gets shown off. Like say, she's one of those show off pipes. She smokes okay. I, I have nothing to say bad about her as far as smoking and stuff, except that uh, I never smoke her for very long because I don't want her to get hot. I don't want her to uh, have the problems that any pipe would have uh, from being uh, carved and then having the, because of it being carved and grooved, I do not think that, the, um, that it smokes steady. I think that it has a tendency to maybe burn a little different. So I don't smoke her very often and I take her out in public. And this is one of those pipes that was purely about beauty and form. It's not at all about function. It has to be, it's a memory. So most of my pipes are not just form and function, but they're also about the memory that's with them. 
this pipe. If you can see, and you probably have to actually get it in better light for you to see. This pipe went through a couple of wars. And every time it went someplace, it got dated and signed with the company that, that he was with and where he was at. And so this is an old pipe. It's I've never smoked it. It has been smoked. It's been cleaned, but um, it stays in my cabinet because this is a memory. This is a memory from uh, a guy that I knew. Uh, he passed away at, uh, I think, 92, and he had been a veteran of two different wars. And so when he gave me this pipe, I was, I was just kind of uh, very verklempt. I, I couldn't believe that someone would part with something this dear to me. And I did, uh, I did like the guy very much. He was like a granddad to me. So when he gave this to me, it brought tears to my eyes. And when I see it, I always think of Gene Saunders, the man that, you know, and that's, that's the sign of a well-loved, well-used, uh, enjoyed pipe. For me, if you have a new pipe on a shelf that hasn't been smoked and it is a good functioning pipe, it's because you have a memory attached to it that, and that's why you're not wanting to smoke. I'm trying to keep that light from glaring at you guys so that you can see these. And so that's, that's neither, that's not neither form nor function. This is just a memory. I mean, it's a beautiful pipe as far as I'm concerned. All pipes are beautiful. It has beautiful memories, but as far as me ever smoking it, it won't be, I won't smoke this. So for me, it's not about the function. It's not about the form. It's, it's not necessarily about the beauty of the pipe, but it's about the memory of, of Jean. They, they were family to us, and, and so this pipe is family to me. It has nothing to do with how it looks or how it will perform. It has to do with the memory attached, and a lot of my pipes have the memory attached. Another pipe that we talk about just beauty, form is crap, <laughs> is a too bold pipe. Now, I don't know what in the world made me think that I would smoke a pipe that had two bowls. Beautiful though, isn't it? Nice, wonderful, craggy top. Beautiful wood, so nice and smooth. No way it fits in your hand. And I never did really figure out how to smoke it because I couldn't figure out how to um, how to mix the tobaccos, what I was really trying for. I tried two different tobaccos and I thought would be a good blend together and it didn't smoke evenly so I'm not really sure how a person's supposed to smoke this pipe. So for me this pipe, although I bought it because it looked neat and everything like that, as far as functionality, it, there is no function to this pipe for me. Now someone else might say, oh I just love two bowl pipes and I do this and this and this and that's fine. I just never did. I never learned to do that with a, a two bowl pipe. And so this pipe is nothing more than the beauty of the pipe, the beauty of the briar, and the um, I don't want to say silliness of the two bowls, but the the uniqueness of having the two bowls is kind of uh, a silly little thing for me. I was lucky enough to meet Darius and his wife and uh, years ago before he quit making them and I bought one and basically it's just uh, a nice, I think they call this a, maybe a Cavalier. I'm not really sure what it is. It has nice ridges on the bowl that you can see that ridge there almost kind of a tulip pattern in a way. Uh, it has the stand and it stands on very nice. It's ebony and ivory. And it is all about beauty. It's never been smoked. It's probably never going to be smoked. Uh, it's in its own little case, in the case of pipes. And it's about the memory, the beauty of this pipe. I think this is just an absolutely beautiful pipe. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, it will smoke fine. A lot of his pipes, I have a couple other of his less artsy pipes that I smoke that, that smoke just fine. He makes a fine pipe. But this is, like I say, more of a pipe of beauty than it is a pipe of function. Its form is what gets you on this one. And now, let's talk Dunhill beauty and form. You guys know I have lots of pipes. 
but for me, there's nothing more beautiful, exciting, and wonderful. But this is me, this isn't everybody, as a rack of little white dots. And in this rack, there is a lot of my favorite Dunhills. They're all a different shape. So these, most of these too have the memories that go with it. You know, uh, maybe a trip to St. Louis where I bought one. This one here, which I really like too. This one was bought on a trip with my dad when we went to Europe one year. This one which is really a long pipe for me. Nice long Canadian, I think they call that one. Beautiful stem. Um, this one was one that uh, I saw it, I loved it, fell in love with it, so I bought it. But after I looked at it, of course, we have the great big bulldoggies. You guys know I love a bulldog. This is a size six bulldog, so it does not even come close to fitting in my hand. But whenever I wanna smoke a pipe for all evening, I load this one up. It never gets hot because of that nice thickness of the bowl there on the dunny, uh, on that. These smoke wonderful. There's nothing I can ever say bad about these Dunhills. Now I have a lot of Dunhills. These are like say once again my favorite. You notice that one has that unique cut at the bottom. Even though it's a bulldog, the way it lays in your hand right in there because of that little short spot is perfect for holding in my hand and this one I know I bought because of the way it holds in my hands. It's wonderful smooth. It has that wonderful bulldog square stem, which is a good sturdy stem for me. And it has that beautiful bend to it. I say all of these are my Dunhills. And you, you see some of these, but I don't know that I've ever even smoked any of these on, to, on video because I have so many that I don't smoke all of them all the time, you know. And this one also is one of my favorites. I'm a lucky girl. And showing him that uh, there's more ways to choose a pipe than just form and function. There's the beauty, there's the uh, memories that are around these pipes also. And so my pipes all, uh, all of them have a little story behind them. And uh, sometimes I tell you guys the stories and sometimes I just show off the pipes. And this time I'm just showing off the pipes. Do you want to see more? I mean, I have a couple hundred at least. <laughs> Happy to really talk to you. Now, when you get them made by somebody uh, like your Rick Blacks uh, that makes them specially for you as opposed to just one he's made and selling, or uh, a Sayers pipe, or I have a, a Kristen uh, P. Patterson that's just a lovely pipe. I'll show you maybe that one. Uh, when you have a pipe, and Paul's pipe, he's made pipes just for me, just for what I want. When you have a pipe maker out there who's willing to make the pipe that you want for you, then that pipe get, gets a whole new field of its own. That pipe becomes a part of you because you were instrumental in the design of it, not necessarily in touching it before it comes to you, but you've told them what you want and they work around what you want. They should Okay, before you guys say anything, I know I am terrible at keeping my racks straightened out and my cabinet straightened out. I just have so many pipes that I find it sometimes difficult to keep them all together. And I am going to go straighten these out, and that's my next project. But I just wanted you to see that the reason I don't talk about any one particular pipe and stuff is I do have quite a few pipes and I like all the makers I have a lot of pipe accessories this is my Christian P that I was talking about isn't that just a perfect pipe see I have some meerschaums and they've all been smoked they've got some nice color on them come in naturally I've never bought a meerschaum pipe that was pre-colored so I do know you can get them that way. Actually, if I were to open all these up, it would just take forever. Like I say, I have quite a few pipes. So for me, it's definitely an addiction. And the addiction started 50 years ago. Actually, my pipe addiction first started 
with my dad. A couple of these Marishams are my dad's. And these are just part of them. <laughs> I do commit the major sin of keeping a bunch of my pipes in their boxes that have never been smoked. And that's just the downstairs case. The upstairs case has quite a few more. <laughs> I warned you guys, I'm an addicted pipe smoker, as you can see. My cabinets are full of either pipe smoking pipes and pipe smoking accessories. I forget about all those up there. Hi, Sue here. 